We're at the Glen Innes Showground. We're running a regional biodiversity event, gathering conservation landholders. I think landholders get out of this event the feeling that they're not the only people looking after land for biodiversity. So they get to meet with each other, they get to share their experiences and some of their knowledge gained as they've gone through this process. It just opens up this whole world of biodiversity. They're already interested, we know that. But once you get excited about biodiversity, there's just more and more and more that you can learn that builds that passion. Yeah, well, I always think any of these sort of meetings, get-togethers, field days, whatever, it is always really nice to talk to other landholders in different landscapes, different situations, whether they're small farms, big farms, highly productive farms, but it's all about land use. I find it interesting to talk to people who have different land use objectives on their particular patch and how they relate biodiversity to their particular landscape. It's about adapting principles from other people's experience, adapting that to your landscape. <laughs> So this morning we went and looked at an area of TSR to show people a really nice area of grassy woodland, which also has an endangered species in it, but also to discuss some of the vagaries of plant ID. So the fact that there is a threatened species there, but this threatened species is, is hybridising with other species and what that means for the long-term survival but also just to look at an area with really good ground cover because there are not that many areas left that have really good native ground cover. What I get out of events like this is the people. People have always got individual experiences about what's happened on their property, what they've seen on their property over quite a lot of years and things, and all that information is really valuable. In a lot of cases, these people have been managing their properties for a long time. So they're familiar with what's there, they're familiar with the feel of the place, and probably most importantly of all, they have an emotional attachment to it. So they, they have a sense of place on their properties. Their role in, in, the, in the greater scheme of things and why they should be supported in this is because most of the country in Australia is actually privately owned. National parks and the public reserve system is, is fragmented and disjointed. These public reserves are, are like islands in a sea of agriculture. So if you can get landowners to actually understand the, the importance of interconnectivity of habitat and to play a role in uh, looking after the biodiversity so that interconnectivity actually takes place, everybody benefits. Despite the rain, we had some really great numbers of people attend. Amazing content throughout the day. Like quite, a, I think a lot of people will be exhausted by the amount of content that we've discussed. But I feel it's a real benefit for Landcare and VCT to work together to really support landholders and help them be connected, foster that relationship. So we're hoping it's going to be a great project this year. And yeah, I'm really excited that we can move beyond the project and keep this great partnership with VCT going and foster and care for our landholders that really care for the land. <laughs>